Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here. Welcome to this mini course on kbtrainings.com. Today I'm going to show you five ways you can practice your computer networking skills. These are five ways you can create labs. This is for someone who's studying for the CCNA, the CCNP, or someone who just wants to be good in certain technology, LAN or WAN or anything like that. You have five ways you can use to build your labs and to practice. These are five ways that I used or I know. There may be a lot of ways out there, a lot of tools that I'm not going to mention, but these are what I use and I'm going to give you some pros, some cons and just an idea. So the goal is to create a video or a mini course on each of them, how to use them, how to install, what are the benefits and everything. This is just an overview of all the different types of labs that you can create. To start off, my name is Guy, I'm a network professional, I work in the telecom and I fall in love with networking a couple days ago and I went through the Cisco certification journey. I'm still into it right now, I have a CCNP, I'm trying to get my CCIE sometime really soon. Actually, this channel was created or KB Trainings was created also to help myself master everything that I teach. So that's why my CCNA class is available and it's free if you can you know be on it that's great it's going to be paid after a while but for now it's free head to kbtrainings.com forward slash ccna you're going to find that and enroll so you can find me also on youtube i have my personal channel gibisuku you can follow me on instagram facebook twitter um send me a request on linkedin if you are in the industry and i'll be glad to connect so my email is contact at kibisuku.com so in the introduction i'm going to give you the objectives the audience and the prerequisite for this this class will give you different ways that you can use to practice computer networking and i'll give you some pros and cons about each of them and we'll just talk a little bit about it i'm going to create and go deep in each of them in my future videos but for today I'm just gonna give you an overview and also will help you choose what is the best option for you depending on where you are on what you're trying to accomplish and everything this is for everyone who's interested in networking and want to push it a little bit far and also for students that are getting ready to take the CCNA the CCNP or any other Cisco certification and for professionals that are trying to build the labs for work or just for you know test environment for their own or the companies and to get this class you have to have some basic notions of IT in the next section before getting into the course itself we're going to talk about the different types of labs that you can build first of all you can have a physical lab physical labs are created with real devices you go out there you go on eBay or you know someone who works at some companies you talk to them and they give you some devices. They give you some old switches, some old routers, and some old firewalls. You bring them home and you build your lab. Those are physical, they are great, they are hands-on, so you can practice your skills without any problem with those, like the Cisco 2950 or the Cisco 2611, or some Juniper devices. So you build your devices physically in your house, in your home, or at your work environment. The second option is rock rental. Rock rental is you renting some rock or some devices from a different company so you have remote access to those companies I mean to those devices that are in a data center somewhere you just have to have good internet connection to have access to them for a certain length of time to practice I'm thinking of INE.com with the rec rental I've never used it but it's also good that's an option that a lot of people out there are using usually with the workbook the third option is a simulation a simulation is a computer program that was written to act as a regular switch or router or a network device and we can mention packet tracer or boson net sim these are simulations they are not real devices they are just computer programs the next type is an emulation emulations are real images that are running on virtual machines or virtual devices in this category we have genus 3 or viral or even g or all the other things that you know the the final option is virtualization even though it's kind of included in emulation but virtualizations is when you use um, a hypervisor like VMware or Hyper-V or anything 
to run your virtual machines on top of them so you use virtual devices inside a hypervisor like vmware all right so the lesson number one is about physical labs and what are exactly physical labs so you build your labs with real devices you go out there you buy devices and you build your lab it's good it's very good it's like the best way because when you are in a work environment most of the time you have to deal with physical labs of course i know these days a lot of companies are moving to the cloud but there is still a lot of uh, but you will still see a lot of physical devices in many other companies and you need to be familiar with them you need to be good with them usually all devices are affordable because new technology is kind of expensive at some point so to get a very good device that is new that has all the new features we will probably break your bank so if you go with a war with all devices you won't have any problem the pros is that it's easy for you to learn and understand when you can see physically the device when you can touch it when you can connect to it you see the link lights you you see everything that's going on on the device and you can also um, do some um, some other uh, practices like a firmware upgrade or password recovery that's why it's good for beginners for people who have not been exposed to network devices in a work environment in a work environment it's better to start with real devices so that you see exactly how it is and you don't freak out the day you show up at work and they present you a device and ask you to configure it so it's a good option to practice with the cons for the physical lab is the space the noise the heat and the cost of electricity i showed you on kbtronics.com my data center on my physical rack that i have in my home and that's something very good very useful it's an investment to me but it comes with some drawbacks like the heat or the nose if you don't have um, some area or some safe space to put it you'll be dealing with a lot of heat you'll be dealing with a lot of noise from those devices from those servers and that's definitely a big drawback and you have a huge electricity bill that you may not be able to pay if you don't have a good job or if you haven't moved very far in your career and the second con is that you are limited in size and in the types of lab that you can create because as i said new technology is expensive so you may not be able to practice new stuff because it's on some device that you cannot afford so you have old switches old routers and that's not good for your future or good for your study so you may be inclined to go some other routes like virtualization or packet transfer just like we're going to mention in the next lessons or next section and talking about physical labs you can also use a second option which is the rack rental rack rental is just you renting devices or you um, having access to some remote devices in a, in a certain data center that you are not responsible of you just have to log into it they give you some time to practice you pay actually for that time it usually comes with a workbook like ini.com does it it's great if you don't want to deal with the hate and everything and you want to practice all the types of lab that you want you can use those uh, rock rental so the pros is that you don't need to install um, or own your own lab you don't need to take care of the huge bill you actually pay for your time and it's also very stable and easy to use the cons is that you need to have a good internet connection if you are disconnected from the internet you won't be able to access your labs and that's definitely a drawback that's a problem also the price might be very high in the long run if you practice a lot or if you are working toward a big certification like the ccnp or anything big you're going to be paying a lot to have access to those labs for a very long time so the next section we're going to talk about packet tracer packet tracer is a simulator created by cisco for students that are a part of the network academy or net acad you just need to create an account it's definitely free you just go on network academy or netacad.com and open your account there you have access to packet tracer you also have some courses how to use it and you can download it from there the pros the, the pros of packet tracer is that it's very light and easy to install it doesn't really take a lot of resources on your computer or your server or your laptop whatever you use it's also recommended for everyone who's studying for the ccna or any other entry-level certification because you have everything that you need all kind of devices all kind of tools there and also let me mention that packet tracer is very powerful on the cisco side of course it's a simulation so there's no you won't have all the commands that are in a real router but you see a lot of new devices or a lot of things 
lot of kind of technology like wireless, cellular, all kind of things. You're going to find all of that in Packet Tracer. If you use it well, you can get your CCNA with it. You can get your CCNP with it. I won't say the CCIE, but it's definitely a very good tool for anyone who's studying for networking. The cons is that, of course, it's a simulator, so it's not a real um, lab. Like you don't use real devices in that. It's some computer program, so you may be lacking some commands. And also, it's mostly for beginners, as I said, even though it's still very powerful and can do many other things that will probably require a lot of money outside of Packet Tracer. In the third lesson, we're going to talk about GNS3. And GNS3 was created in 2008 by Jeremy Grossman, and it's growing so far. It's a big community right now online. A lot of people are using it. It's mostly used by professionals, and you can use it locally on your computer, or you can use it on a remote server. And the pros are that GNS3 uses real devices. You use real images. You have to have the images to install on GNS3. And those images are real Cisco images. You can get them from real devices or you can download them from Cisco's website or you can get them from the viral license. Actually, viral is a good way for you to have those images and install them and you can use them without any problem. One thing that I like about GNS3 is that you can integrate GNS3 with an external network or external virtual network. So it's something that's very useful. You may have a virtual app of GNS3 and connect it to the internet to download something or to check some connection or it, it's just a good way of practicing. It also supports a lot of vendors or equipment. You can use some junipers on it. You can build your F5 um, load balancer. You can you can pretty much do a lot of things with GNS3. And all the vendors do not have the same conditions. Some vendors are putting out their images for free, and some are selling or require a contract between your employer or you and them in order to get those images. But the images are on the internet somewhere, so you'll probably be able to find it. I don't know any. I don't know what you're going to use to get those images but yeah you need to definitely get them to use gns3 and the cons are even though gns3 is free you still need those images some of them are free as i said and some of them are paid like the viral images and uh, uh, gns3 also requires enough memory on your pc or on your server because those images are real they need real random memory they need real storage and you need to be able to provide that from your pc so that's why your pc need to be uh, powerful unlike packet tracer that you can run on any pc um, that meets the small requirement that it has but with gns3 you need to have some memory available at least 8 gig of ram would be good for um, a pc on which you want to run gns3 i'm going to build a course on this show you how to install and everything another con is that i noticed that some topologies are not stable if they run for a long time so that's something that i don't like about gns3 of course they are building new versions every so often and you you get some updates to install and everything but so far for me i know that if i leave a topology running for a long period i have a chance to have a bug and just lose everything and restart again from scratch which is not a big deal but it's still something to consider in the next lesson we are going to talk about viral viral is created by cisco just like packet tracer but this is a little more advanced and it's used by professionals for labs for tests or anything that they want to do you can use it locally or on a remote server the pros for virals are that you use real images, just like GNS3. It's also very stable and easy to use after the install. The install process might be a little bit long, but once you go through it and you get your, uh, your topologies running or whatever you're doing, it's going to be very easy, very stable. And also, I like the fact that you can pre-configure your topology with the auto config tool. You can build the configuration so that when you deploy your simulation or your topology, you only have to focus on the technology that you're trying to study. You don't have to restart all the configuration from scratch. The cons are that it's paid. It's not free. It's about $200 a year, 200 American dollars. And uh, you can use the images that you get from there 
on Genesis 3, but you still have to pay for a 365 days license, which is $200. It's also very heavy. You need to have a good memory on your PC or your server to run viral. That's one of the, the cons. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about VMware. VMware can be used today to build your lab. A lot of vendors out there made their virtual machines available so you can get those virtual machines and install them on a certain server on a hypervisor and use that for your lab. So you use so you use a single bare metal server to host several virtual machines and run your labs without any issue. So the pros are that it supports a lot of kind of devices or equipments that you want to practice and it's also very stable and reliable as long as your server is running the hypervisor will be able to keep your virtual machines running just like a regular router. It may be running for days or months without any problem. And the cons with VMware is that you need some advanced knowledge to set it up. Um, advanced doesn't mean difficult, but you need to be able to set up VLANs and uh, you need to have some knowledge of VMware to be able to deploy all those virtual machines and use them for your labs. Also, it doesn't have support for hardware features. Anything that's related to hardware or to the fabric of the device, you won't be able to do it because the device is virtual and you need images and OVAs. Some OVAs are free and some are paid. You can get them on um, on the Cisco website or you can get them uh, depending on the vendor you're trying to practice. There are many ways for you to get those OVAs and it's not always very easy. That's one of the cons. So you need to be able to find those images or the OVAs to install on VMware. Another option that is included in the virtualization is the cloud. You can use any cloud provider to host your virtual devices. So you use your virtual devices in the cloud. You may use AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google platform to host them. And uh, uh, you can use some website like packet.com, I think, to, to do that. I've never done it, but that's an option that you have available for you. The pros are, of course, that you support, I mean, it supports a lot of kind of equipment. So you can install just like you can install it on your own VMware server, and it's very stable and reliable. The cons are are that this can become a little expensive at some point because you have to pay for that computation power that you use in the cloud. You need to pay for the time that you uh, you are connected. You need to pay for all of that. So that will cost you a little bit over time. And also there's no support, just like with VMware, there's no support for hardware features and you still need images. And that's all for the cloud. And for the conclusion, I'm going to give you some recommendation. Personally, I was using at some point Packet Tracer at the beginning, but I stepped up my game a little bit and went to GNS3 for my CCNA. So I did the CCNA using the GNS3. And at the CCNP level, I included VMware as well. So that's something to consider. If you are a beginner, you need at least to have Packet Tracer, and it's really good. You may have a lot of things that you need on Packet Tracer. You also need to have a real device. Whatever device you can find, a switch, a router, a firewall, just have it and have your hands on it, practice some new stuff on it, and it's a good way for you not to be worried when you face a real device in the work environment. So be familiar with it, get a device and Packet Tracer, and you'll be okay. And for pros or for advanced, you can use Genesis 3 and VMware. These are two options. Uh, VMware can be uh, replaced by Viral. I do use Viral right now for my CCIE and it definitely does a good job, but I still recommend GNS3 and VMware. So my personal choice is VMware and GNS3, but again, it doesn't really matter what you use to practice. The goal or the bottom line for you is to keep practicing and do it a lot because that's how you know. So you can use anything, even G, Bosom, NetSim, or you know, Packet Tracer, it doesn't really matter. Just be into it, do it all the time. That's how you improve yourself, that's how you get new skills, and that's how you become good. I'm thanking you for watching this and this is Guy with KB Trainings where I share with you a lot of things that I do. I'm going to create some different videos where I go in depth with uh, some types of labs that I mentioned like Packet Tracer, Genesis 3 and VMware. I actually started VMware already so we just could, we're just going to move forward with it. And if you haven't checked out kbtrainings.com please do. There is a course on CCNA that I'm creating right now. It's currently free. You can enroll and have access to all the content that I'm releasing and once you are 
role, you will have access to the course even if it becomes paid. Yeah, check it out. Go on kbtrainings.com forward slash CCNA and you're going to find that course. Thank you so much for watching. This is Guy and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.